So you have your Twitch channel. It's made. And now the only thing left for you to start streaming is the broadcasting software. And you've been asking around and people keep telling you OBS Studio is the way to go. It's the best of the best. They might be right. Or maybe you've been using another software to broadcast your streams and now you're looking to maybe switch. Maybe you feel like you're being held back. Well... Hey guys, get level here and today I'm going to be showing you the ultimate process of installing and setting up OBS Studio in order to live stream on Twitch. My goal for this video is to go step by step from downloading, installing, setting it up and then putting some overlays in order to make it look good. So hopefully by the end of this video, the only thing that you will have to do is click that go live button. Now, although I'm going to be going step by step, there are a bunch of steps that you can actually skip if you use today's sponsor. Now, if you've been following this channel for a little bit, you know that own.gg slash get level is where you go to get everything customizable for a live streamer or even a YouTuber. But what if I told you that the real streamers use own.gg slash get level pro? <laughs> Seriously, own just announced own pro, which is an OBS studio plugin that gives you access to everything you need straight into OBS. Once you install it, it will give you access to a library of overlays and alerts that you can just scroll through, pick one you like and then test it. Click on it, one click install, easy clap. Now let's say you want to add something like stream labels, aka latest subscriber, latest follower. Own makes it easy to do that from your source list. You would like to display your chat box into your overlay? No problem. They are actually already working on things like a dedicated Twitch chatbot and a possible copyright free music solution that avoids you from getting those nasty DMCAs. Now let's talk about fees. Oof, you almost got scared there. You thought there wasn't gonna be a free plan. Well, there is, and the free plan it's not a trial, it's free forever. So if you want to test the free pro, that's fine. But if you want to go pro pro, you can also do that. I'll let you check out the difference between the two plans. But in the meantime, go to own.gg slash get level pro and step up your OBS studio game. And one extra bonus about Owned is that they're going to be having some crazy promos during the holidays, both for Owned Pro, so Owned.gg slash Guy Level Pro, but also Owned.gg slash Guy Level. The difference here is one is for that OBS Studio plugin and then the rest is for just overlay packs and alerts and graphics. They're going to be having some huge sale during the Black Friday week, Black Friday itself, Cyber Week, and pretty much the whole month of December up until Christmas. Those promos are going to be from 50% off up to 60 60% off so just just letting you know okay links are gonna be in the description okay so step number one is going to be go to obsproject.com slash download in order to download OBS studio it's gonna look like that so you can click download installer find where you want to install it let's just click save here so when it's done downloading you can just click on it and we're just gonna install it installation is pretty straightforward click next Now, as you can see, I did not launch it immediately. That's because it is preferable to launch it as an admin. So if you add it here, it will probably show up here. It's not showing because I already had it, but you can go to more and then click run ad, run as administrator. Now this is what it should look like once you open it. If you get some prompts for things like, would you like to set up your automatic wizard or would you like to connect your Twitch account? You need to say yes and do those things. My computer already had a profile, so it did not Give me those messages. If you don't get those dialog boxes, you can just click on tool up top here and then click auto configuration wizard. And then here it will give you a choice. Optimize for streaming. Recording is secondary. If you're a live streamer, then that's what you're going to pick and then click next base canvas use current is what I advise you using because it's going to basically detect your screen and the resolution of your screen. Base canvas is your current screen, what you see. And then FPS, usually 30 to 60 is usually the basics. You click next and then here it will ask you which platform you want to stream on select twitch and click connect account so you just type in your username and your password uh, if you have a token for your authentication you can submit that and click ok and then here you'll click authorize basically what it will do is take all the information from your twitch account and then allow you to use that in order to stream to your twitch account okay make sure those are ticked uh, prefer hardware encoding we don't have anything to do here just click next and now it will basically test everything. Now, when it comes to my internet connection, mine is really, really bad. I have 0.7 upload speed because when you're broadcasting on the internet, it's basically taking your upload speed. So that's what matters. Your download speed doesn't matter that much. It's mostly the upload speed. Since mine is so, so low, we're probably gonna get a very, very, very low result. 
and here we have the results. Now beware, because those results are not always perfect. For example, um, the server is automatic for now, but I saw that it was testing the UK server, so I will have to check to see if I'm on UK server or France server, because I am currently in Paris and there is a server in Paris. Video bitrate 422, if you have a decent internet connection, you will most likely have something between 2000 and 6000, preferably. 422s bitrate is going to give you a very, very bad quality. But if you know that you have a very bad internet connection, you should probably trust this auto configuration. Click apply settings. And since you're connected with your Twitch account, it is actually going to give you the chat right here. And you can see if I click and drag, it's basically trying to predict where I want to put it. You want your chat to be here and you can always resize it a little bit. And this is stream information. Now this is not really a useful tab right now, so we're going to close it. Let's click OK. The other useful tab that we want is the activity feed. Basically we want to know if someone just followed, if someone did this, if someone did that, because we don't have alerts set up yet. So we're going to click on View, Docs, Twitch activity feed. Make sure it loads, we're going to wait, and there it is. And of course you can place it wherever you want, but this is very uh, readable, if you will. Now we have our basic setup. Time to explain the whole principle of OBS now. This screen right here, this is what you will visually be broadcasting to Twitch. Right now it will be 1080p because my screen is 1080p, but the output on the actual website is going to be different. It's going to be smaller because the, the auto configuration decided that for me. Now let's talk about the important sections. Bottom left, you will find scenes. Scenes is basically segments. It's something that will comprise of a bunch of stuff, <laughs> of a bunch of images, videos, or whatever you can display on one uh, segment, on one scene. If we add another scene, we can switch in between those segments and then different segments will show different things. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the typical Twitch scene setup looks like. So here I have just a video. This will show you in order basically what the typical Twitch scenes look like. The first one is going to be a starting soon. This is what you're going to be at when you just start the stream. In order to let people gather around, get the notifications and get hyped up for the stream before it actually begins. And then here we will have something called the intermission screen or the full screen webcam screen. <laughs> basically that is when you are starting the show, the camera is going to be the on the forefront and it's going to be the focus. And this is where you can say hi, how you doing? And you can talk with your viewers already. On the right side, you can see we have the chat and our overlay still matches the same colors because we had specific branding for this example. This is what the game scene will look like. As you can see, the camera is smaller so we can see the game underneath it. And then at the bottom, you will find what is called the labels bar or the stream labels. And those are little graphics that will show people who have recently supported the stream by following, cheering, or subscribing, or donating. And then this is a be right back screen if you have to take a little break. And this will be a stream ending if you would like to display a screen before the stream actually ends to let people know, hey, the stream is currently ending. I don't advise you using it, but a lot of people seem to insist on using an ending screen. So there it is. Now that we have this information, we're going to create a bunch of empty scenes and we are going to create the typical scenes list. So I'm going to call this one. I'm going to keep the first one for the starting soon. I'm going to call this one the intermission. I'm going to click the plus to add another one. We're going to call this one the game scene. We're just going to call it game. We're going to call this one the BRB. And we're going to call this last one the ending. OK, there you go. So the easy way of adding what we call overlays, which is basically graphics that will show on your stream, is to either create them yourself or, or of course, you can go to gumroad.com slash get level, for example, and you can get a bunch of them for free. If it's your very first time setting up OBS Studio, I advise you using a static overlay pack and I advise you using a free one. For example, this one was inspired by Valorant. You can just type zero in the price box here and then add to cart and just proceed to checkout. And basically it will give you all of those images. Those are just images that you will be adding to OBS Studio and also to your Twitch channel if you want to. Everything is included in this pack. So the easiest method, well, we're going to rename this scene. Let's right click on it, click rename. And we're going to type starting. 
Okay, now one way to add a source is by clicking the plus at the bottom of the source list here. But you need to make sure you know exactly what type of source that you want to add. For example, right here, we want to add just an image, an overlay. You're going to click on the plus and then click on image. We're going to name this because there's going to be a lot of sources at some point. We don't want to get lost. So we're going to call this the starting overlay. And we're going to click OK. And as you can see, it adds it. Plus, it opens this dialog box that asks me pretty much to find it so it can show me a preview. So we're going to go ahead and find it wherever we saved it on our computer. And I'm going to go find the starting soon overlay. Now it shows me a preview and I can click OK. And congratulations, you have your first overlay. <laughs> Technically, you can go ahead and click start, start uh, streaming right now, but you would only stream this. <laughs> OK, so this is the first overlay. This is the first scene. Technically, you can leave this like that. It's fine for now. Let's go to the intermission scene. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing, except we're going to find the intermission overlay. Image. Intermission overlay. OK. Find it. And it says intermission.png. OK. Boom. Now, there are two things that is important about this specific scene. As we saw before, there was my camera and there was my chat box. We're going to talk about the chat box a little bit later, but let's start by adding the camera. So we're going to click plus and go to video capture device. And that's going to be our camera. As you can see, whatever type of source you're adding, you're going to have to rename it. So this is our camera. If you have like a Logitech C920, you can also add that. Uh, this is the device, you pick the thing. And um, resolution, FPS, you might want to change that if it's like super small for some reason, but you know you have an HD camera that is 1080p, you can just click here, click custom, and then pick the resolution in this drop down menu. As you can see, I like leaving it to default because mine is working just fine. And then click OK. Now we have a camera. The thing here with the source list is that it's layers. So um, let's say that. This is my intermission overlay, and then this is my camera. What happens is that you can't see the intermission overlay because it's behind the camera. So in the list, the order actually matches the visual order. So you want the intermission to be on top of it. Whoop, there you go. And now it works, right? Now, if you want to move things around, there are a couple of properties that you can change, but you can select it, the camera that is, you can move it, around of course you can drag the corners in order to scale it if you have to in this case i don't really have to but most importantly which is the biggest tip here is that you can hold alt on your keyboard and crop it okay in this case we don't need to because i thought of it when i was making this overlay you just drag it underneath it in the source and you're fine. We're going to skip the chat for now, but we're going to go back to it. Now for the game overlay, we're going to do pretty much the same thing, but OBS actually allows us to use some sources multiple times. So we're going to add video capture device. And instead of adding a brand new one, we can click add existing because we already added our camera. We can click OK. OK. And what we can do now is maybe add a camera overlay. So we can click plus image. camera overlay and find a camera overlay and this overlay pack you have the choice between a short one or a wide one you can go ahead and click on that wide one it's easier because it's 1080p you just drag the corners to make it match remember this is our game scene so our game is going to be there so we want our webcam not to be too big and we're going to drag it until it matches now all the overlays don't necessarily match perfectly so let's say if you have an issue right here, let's pretend that we have an issue, okay? We would click on the camera and remember Alt and drag the sides to crop. And now we have our camera overlay with our camera. Now, how do we make it so that if I want to move, it moves with it? Brought it back. I'm gonna hold Shift and select both of them in the source. Now I can right click go group selected items and group them. Now they're in a group and it's asking me to give it a name. I'm just gonna call it cam, easier to read, okay? Now I can click away and if I click here, it's gonna select the group. Now I can move them together 
and everything, right? I can even scale it together. But if I want to add anything to the camera, for example, I don't like the fact that it's, it's, I'm looking here and I want to look, you know, pretend that I'm going to be looking towards the video game. I can right click on it, go to transform and flip horizontal. I absolutely advise you playing around with every single thing that you see. You should, you should really look around and see everything that you can possibly do, but we're doing the basics here. Now, what is missing? Our game. What will be our game? We want to capture the gameplay. Now, not, let's imagine that we have a game that is open. We would have to go and click on game capture, which would add a screen that is the game capture. And then from this dialog log box here in mode, it will tell you capture any full screen application. So if your game is full screen, full screen on another screen, it will capture it. But we can make it specific window just to make sure that it's fine. And in window, you will go ahead and find your game in here. Now, and basically it will show you a 1080p uh, game capture window. And again, it's going to add it to the top. You would want to drag it all the way down so that your camera is going to be on top of it. All right. Okay. For the be right back screen, exactly the same thing as the starting soon screen. Click image. BRB overlay. This is going to be. Click browse and be right back. And those are pretty much the basics when it comes to live streaming on Twitch, having an overlay set up with OBS Studio. When something happens, it will show in your activity feed. And when people talk in your chat, me and Nightbot will respond. It will also show up on your screen. Those are not things that people can see. Everything that people will see on stream is what's here according to the output resolution. Now we have an issue here. Our issue here is that as you can see in our audio mixer, which is right here, it's not showing us any sources. And here it's showing camera, but we don't see a microphone. So let's fix this. We're going to go to settings and we're going to go to audio. Okay. So global audio devices, this is where it's at. Desktop audio is important. It's going to be the device that you're hearing the sound from. It will capture everything that you can hear. Basically the stream will be able to hear it. You can leave it at default. So it will just match whatever windows has as default. For example, right now, my windows has my TV and it will pick up everything that I play on my TV. It will pick it up or you can pick a specific source. If I have my headphones on at the same time, I can also make sure that everything that I, that I'm playing in my headphones is going to be picked up. And then mic auxiliary audio is your microphone. And in this case, uh, let's pick something else. Let's pick my VR headset microphone just to show you. And once you do this and you click apply, then OK, you will see that it added those two sources in every single scene. Right now, our camera is actually not emitting any sound, so we want to hide this. We're going to click on the little cogwheel here and we're going to click on hide. That's it to make sure that we just have desktop and mic. And of course, we have this little graphic visualizer to know that when we're speaking, if you want to mute yourself, you can just click here. And as you can see, it's not picking it up anymore. And now it's picking it up. If you play some sound on your desktop, it will move like that too. And as long as you see those things moving, that means that stream can hear them. Okay. Now let's talk about the extra steps. Uh, for example, on this overlay, you're supposed to have a chat box. In general, you don't just want to see things happening in the activity feed to thank people for supporting you. You would like to see a little graphic that says, hey, this person just followed. Maybe a little sound plays with it. You would also maybe want to have the name of your most recent supporters at the bottom. Now, Twitch doesn't do that. Twitch does not have alerts. I mean, unless you're using Twitch Studio, but don't use Twitch Studio. <laughs> Twitch does not provide those services, basically those cool little widgets and stuff. Twitch doesn't really provide them. OBS Studio does not provide them either. So you will need a company that allows you to link your Twitch channel with them and then they will show things basically when you get some alerts or uh, change the little labels every time someone new follows and stuff like that. There are multiple services. I personally use Streamlabs. There's also stream elements that you can use. They pretty much do the same thing, maybe differently, but ultimately it's the same thing. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to do it using Streamlabs and Streamlabs is a service not to be <laughs> confused with Streamlabs OBS, which is a software made by Streamlabs. Anyways, let's go to streamlabs.com. 
It's that simple. And what you do when you go to streamlabs.com is that you click login and you log in with your Twitch account. It's gonna ask you to authorize and all of that. And now it brings you to the dashboard. Don't let this intimidate you, okay? Um, up top, there's a search bar where you can just type whatever you're looking for. You want the alert box that I talked about? Let's type alert box. It will bring you to the alert box settings, okay? As you can see here, it says use the URL below in OBS Studio. So this is the URL that they are talking about, okay? As you can see, all of those things are checked. That means that we are about to add an alert box that will display all of those alerts. If any of those things happen, it will show up from that one alert box. You can actually uncheck them if you don't want some of them to show up, but ultimately this is here, okay? So we're gonna click copy. I'm not gonna show you how to customize your own alerts in this video, but um, you should be using the default. I don't currently have the default, but you'll see. And then go back to OBS Studio. Now, anything that comes from a website, basically, that you want to show to display, um, it's basically displaying from a web page is going to be what is called a browser source. So when you add that to your scene, you're gonna go find browser. Uh, and we'll call this one alert, alerts. And as you can see here, it asks you for a URL and that is the one that we just copied. So let's just control V, there you go. Now, you can leave it at this size if you want to. That's 800 by 600. If you're just starting out, that's completely fine. Unless you have alerts that you want to be really full screen, then you can put, you know, 1080p here. So far, so good. Just click OK. This is going to disappear. And now we have this empty box. But what does it mean? What does the empty box? OK, uh, basically, it means that uh, there's no alert going on right now. So that's why it's not showing. So what I'm going to do is show you how to test your alerts. Click here. So on the Streamlabs website, you can test follow, test sub, test resub, test all of that. I'm going to lower my volume and, and basically it will show the alerts in the alert box. So let's test follow. Remember, I have custom alerts. Uh, they're probably weird for you. Um, <laughs> yours will not look like that. And basically a little graphic will show up with some text that you can customize. I, I, I'll, I'm gonna let you go play around with this page, but there you go. If someone subs, if someone gives you bits. bits. Oh my God, <laughs> always scares me. And I have TTS, so let's wait it out. All right, now you have your alert box. Now, if you want your alerts to actually show, what you want to do is copy them. So right click, copy and you kind of have to paste them in every single scene just to make sure that they show up on every scene. Well, we didn't make an ending screen, that's fine. Let's just delete that one. <laughs> and uh, just like any other source, you can move it around, you can play around with it and all that. Now let's talk about uh, the chat. Streamlabs also offers a chat box. So back on their website, on that search bar, you're gonna type chat and you're gonna find chat box widget. That's what we want. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. It also works with a browser source. Now remember the order of things. We just added the, the alerts here in OBS. And as you can see, I added the alerts on top of everything else because visually it needs to be on top if you want it to be on top. Go back to Streamlabs and we're gonna do the exact same thing and we're gonna copy that thing up there. <laughs> that link up there. I'm gonna click that plus. Well, we don't want to add chat on this starting soon screen. Let's go to intermission, click on that plus, click browser, and then click chat box. I'm gonna select this, replace it, but here's an issue here. We don't want this to look like that, okay? We want this to have pretty much the same shape as what we're seeing here. So what we can do is move it, first of all, we're gonna move it, and then we're gonna play around with the values here until they look like what we want it to look like. So the width, we want that to be at least 400. Let's click away. Why is it not updating? <laughs> and then the height is probably gonna be 700. Let's click okay. Oh, that's nice. That's actually perfect. Oh my God, I nailed it in the first try. <laughs> what? Okay, uh, you might have to play around with it a little bit more, but there you go. Technically you have a chat box now. If you type in your chat, it's gonna show up here. 
And if you don't like the way the font looks or anything like that, you can just go back to the website here and play around with it until it looks like something you like. A little bonus tip is that if you switch scenes and you come back and this is empty, you need to right click on chat box, click properties, and in here it will probably have this ticked saying shut down when source not visible. You need to uncheck it, okay? That's why it stays here. Let's talk about Stinger Transitions. Stinger Transitions are gonna be at the bottom of your audio mixer. So you can click Scene Transitions here. And as you can see, I have it on a fade and I can play around with the duration of that fade. But there's a bunch of others. You know, there's also Swipe, there's Cut, so it's a little brutal, <laughs> there you go. And you can add extra ones. If you add them, that doesn't mean that they're gonna be necessarily selected, it's just you can add multiple ones and then you can pick them depending on which stream. It's gonna add them because right now, by default, I only have cut and fade that are set and I'm gonna have to add those so I can select them later on. Let's say swipe, add swipe, just gonna call it swipe, that's fine. And here you can preview the transition. You can swipe in. I don't know what the difference is. Oh, <laughs> the difference is that the A doesn't move here, so the B comes in, or the A moves away and to reveal the B. Let's click OK, and then we can do this or that. But 300 second, milliseconds is too, way, way, way too fast. I like having mine to be at least one second or... There you go, that's smooth. Fun fact, this is actually the transition that I use on my actual live streams. Anyway, so chat box, what else is missing? Oh, the labels at the bottom here. So uh, we can go back to Streamlabs, the website, and let's type labels. And this is where it gets a little complicated, okay? Because you kind of have to download something here in order to make it work. Let's click Windows. It's a small little software, basically that will be creating text files. And those text files will be updated every time there's a new activity. If someone follows you, there will be one file that's called recent follower. And someone else follows you, this file will be updated automatically with the new name. And this is what we'll be able to display. So while this is downloading with my very, very bad internet connection, I can show you what it would look like. You can go ahead and click text. And let's call this one recent follower. You would click OK. And this is basically the basic text source, okay? Type whatever, we'll show you here. And um, yeah, you can select the font up here, like this one, click OK. I have a cool font. But when it comes to the stream labels, since I said it will be creating those files, you would have to click read from file and then browse and you will have to find where those stream labels decided to put your files. That is one of the things that uh, if you're using Streamlabs OBS, you don't have to deal with this because it's already connected. It's already It already knows what your labels are. But also if you use own pro, so that's <laughs> own.gg slash get level pro, it's a plugin for OBS Studio that will help you just Click add. <gasps> it's a plugin for OBS Studio that will help you just click plus, just as if you were adding any other source, and then pick your labels without going through stream labels. Okay, so here it is. Let's click to open it. Again, connect with Twitch. Again, type your username and password. Again, authorize. And then here you can choose your output directory. That is where those files are going to be, those text files. Remember? Talked about them. <laughs> <laughs> One easy way to not lose them is to create a folder on your desktop, control shift N, and call them stream labels. And go inside of this and then click select folder. All right, wait a couple seconds, it's gonna load up you know, your last activity. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that folder to show you what's in there. So if I go to desktop, stream labels, and as you can see, there's a ton of text files. I encourage you to read them all to see what is possible to display, but we're mostly interested in the M's right here. Most recent cheerer, most recent follower, most recent subscriber. Now back to OBS Studio, remember we had our text, we click read from file, we clicked browse, and now we're gonna find our most recent follower. Desktop, stream labels, I'm gonna type M on my keyboard, most recent follower right there and I will have the name of my most recent follower. And I can actually format it, again, select the font, select the size and all that. 
in whatever font I want. You can click OK. And I can just place it. Why are they... What that? Why are they... Am I... Why are there people in my chat? <laughs> I'm not live. Am I live? No, I'm not live. <laughs> Why are there any random people in my chat? <laughs> okay, that was surprising. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> so you can just place the labels just like that. Now the cool thing with me and other people who make overlays is that they will create labels bars that are just graphics where you can just place those those names so it looks even better. I was watching a YouTube video and looking at your panels at the same time. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna flip my camera because it's bothering me. There we go. Okay, that's better. So uh, I was talking about graphics, uh, stream labels, graphics that I call labels bars. Uh, let's go back a little bit here. Okay, for example, in this, I have uh, specific graphics. For example, if you're not affiliate, you can get donations through Streamlabs, right? You can get followers, you can get donations, and this is supposed to be top donation. If you are affiliate, you'll get subscriber, donation, and cheer, like most recent for all of those. So we're gonna use the non-affiliate one, okay? So I can go ahead and add this, it's an image. We're gonna call it labels bar. Go find where it is and add it. As you can see, it's gonna be added to the top here. Everything is fine, click okay. Drag it down, you can either put it here. If you don't wanna put it here, you can put it wherever you want, but this overlay pack was kind of made for it to be here. We can scale it first and then place it. Now, remember the order. We have our recent follower that is on top of our chat box and our, and our chat box is on top of the alerts. The alerts is usually what you want to be showing all the time. You don't want anything to obstruct the alerts. So you want that to be all the way to the top every single time. Or you can just drag it and <laughs> put it up. There you go. Uh, in this case, we want our recent follower to be on top of the labels bar. Boom. Now, here's the issue. If you are getting, for example, if you're setting this up right now and that the name changes and it's a very long name, it will overlap on your graphics and you don't want that. So one way that streamers usually do is that they add a scroll filter. That means they limit, they limit, they limit the width and it will not go over. So we can right click on recent follower and we're going to enter the world of filters. Boom. Oh my God. Don't be, don't be intimidated. Okay. Bottom, same thing, little plus add a new filter. And what is it that we're trying to do? We're trying to scroll. So click scroll, click okay. And now we can find the horizontal speed to make it move. We can make it go crazy, but that's too distracting. Okay. We don't want to get the attention away from our beautiful face, right? Okay. Drag that to the side so you can see what you're doing. And here we're going to click limit width. All right, as you can see, 100, too small. Let's click 300, still too small. To 3,000, way too much. Let's go with 600, not enough. 800, that might just be it, okay? Nice. Okay, now you have to do it for this and that too. Oh my God, what a headache. Do I need to add a new one? How am I gonna make sure that everything matches? I'm gonna have to find the, the exact same font, the exact same this, the exact same that. No, you don't have to, okay? Now let's talk about the power of copy pasting in OBS Studio. Let's right click on our recent follower and let's copy. Now we're gonna talk about the difference between paste reference and paste duplicate. Now right click, and as you can see, you have both of those. Paste reference is basically pasting the same source. That means that it's linked with the old one. If you modify the first one, the second one will be modified too. We don't want that because we know that we're going to have to choose a different file, right? The next file is going to be most recent donator. So we're going to click paste duplicate, where it's going to give us the same source, but they're two different things. So I can modify this. I can double click on this and go find my most recent Donator. Scroll down, boom, most recent donator, and click open. And if I click OK here, I can drag down here. Boom. And it already has the filter because we duplicated it, right? 
Now, the only thing that might get confusing is the order. Remember to put them all. All of them needs to be underneath the alert, but also you will want to rename this to uh, recent donator. Just to make sure you don't get confused, right? And then we still copied the first one. So let's paste, duplicate another one. Another one, as DJ Khaled would say. And let's drag this about here. Again, double click on it, find top donator. So this one is all time top, all time top donator. Again, take a, take 30 seconds and look at all the files to see what is possible. Click OK. You're good. Now let's rename this. All right, and let's drag it down. I remember when we grouped up the camera with the camera overlay, this is too many, this is too much, right? If you wanna have a quick glance and know what's going on, this is too much. So let's group up all the labels together to have to stay with the labels bar. So I'm gonna click on labels bar and I'm gonna click on that last label, holding shift on my keyboard, right click, group selected items and call this one labels. That's it, just labels. And we can collapse the group like this. And now we can also move the group like this. We can also scale the group uh, like this. Let's keep it here. Now remember the copy paste? You can actually do that for um, everything, almost every source. So we, let's right click labels. But this time we're gonna copy reference because our label is cool. We want our label to stay the same, right? So if I want my labels to show up in game, I can just right click here, paste a reference. And my labels are here. And that's the group that I just uh, pasted in, right? I can collapse it here, collapse my camera group. I want my alerts to be on top though, okay? Make sure you don't drop it inside of the group and you're fine and you're just fine. Oh, I want it to be in my be right back screen. Easy clap, paste reference, it's here. Make it in the middle, nice. Another thing that I want you to play around with is the transform properties, you know, right click on stuff. Go transform, make sure you understand everything that is here. You realize that you can't just rotate stuff willy nilly. It's gonna be 90 degrees. Uh, know the that's the best way to know the limitations. Uh, let's right click, paste reference again. Boom, pretty much. And you can place it wherever you want. Just make sure the alert's on top, okay? Right here, it would add it to the group, but oh, up top here, it's on top. Just like you're gonna be on top of the Twitch game. All right, I believe this is all for a basic. All you need to do now is click start streaming and automatically pretty much is gonna, you know what we should, <laughs> what happens if we click start streaming now? Now, uh, um, you wanna go back to your audio mixer if you wanna have, I don't like talking about checklists before streaming, but the good thing is to make sure that you are on the starting soon, okay? And then you would click start streaming. And everything would start. If you want to play music, you can open up YouTube. Maybe not YouTube, actually. You can open up your favorite non-copyrighted music um, service. And then when you're ready, you go to the intermission, you stop the music or, you know, you lower the music and you're like, yo, yo, what up? It's me, the brand new streamer on OBS Studio. I just watched the tutorial and now my stream looks amazing and I did not have to pay anything. And then when you're ready to go in the game, of course, the game is not here, but we have the game capture, okay? It will show up here. You can be like, oh my God, oh, I'm playing games. And you're like, oh, I got to poop. I got to poop. <laughs> and you'll be right back. And you go back to the game directly. Or if you're like, be right back. And then you're like, you know what? Uh, I'm not feeling well. Those tacos, they killed me. You go back to inter intermission and you let people know, hey, you know, uh, I got to go now, but we're going to raid someone. <laughs> this video is going to be way longer than I anticipated. But th those are the basics. Your desktop audio is going to pick up your game is gonna pick up the music that you're playing. Again, if you can hear it, stream can hear it. Always take a look if you're not sure about, you know, audio volume and stuff like that. For example, you can see that the green is going here and not higher. If desktop audio goes higher, that literally means that your desktop audio is louder than your voice. Nothing should be louder than your voice. You're the host of the show. Anyways, as I said, Owned Pro will actually help you skip a couple of those steps. I will be making a separate video on how to install it and how to use it, just to make sure that everyone is clear and everyone understands how it works. If I forgot or if I left out a couple of things, uh, definitely let me know in the comment section below if there are things that you're just interested in you would like to know about. Uh, let me know. I'll definitely be making more OBS Studio tutorials. I've been neglecting OBS Studio and everything changed uh, since my last uh, tutorials on OBS Studio. So once again, in order to get cool overlays like that, 
go to gumroad.com slash get level there are paid ones if you were to add animated overlays you would just add media sources let me show you real quick so click plus and go to media source if it's animated if it moves because that's where you can get like movie or video files like mp4 webm dot mov dot avi and all that stuff it's media not image but again as you can see there's a ton of sources make sure you read and you you kind of figure out what they all do uh, the filters same thing make sure you figure out what they all do the properties when you right click what does that do what did it do being curious like that is the best way that you're going to actually be able to learn how the ins and out of OBS Studio. Anyways, in the meantime, I got to tell you guys, thank you so, so much for watching this long video. Hopefully everything was clear enough. Can't wait uh, to read your comments. If you have any questions, any like more particular questions, uh, you can also join my Discord. Links will be in the description. I also have a bunch of affiliate links in the description if you'd like to help out. But, you know, just getting overlays from gumroad.com slash level should be enough to help me out and support the channel. That all being said, if you check top right of your screen right now, YouTube will show you what they think is the best video you should watch next. And at the bottom of it, you will find my most recent video. So check him out. Keep on learning about streaming. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Go out there. Make me proud. Get level. Out.